Hello and welcome to Take Time. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, and let's talk about some of our pet peeves. So running a YouTube channel, I am privy to a lot of comments with questions, concerns, and inquiries regarding quality control issues and some major pet peeves that people have when it comes to their timepieces. So today, I just wanted us to sit down and take time to discuss some of these major pet peeves we have with watches at large. And of course, you have my complete consent to leave comments down below in, in, in regards to your major pet peeves. And obviously, we can discuss, as I mentioned, the pet peeves I list today. So one of the major complaints I hear about in regards to watches, and specifically Seiko, I'm looking at you, is quality control. I mean, chapter ring alignment, bezel alignment, even Bruce Williams, Bruce Williams did a video on a Seiko Samurai he got that had the crown not drilled precisely at three o'clock. It was just offset one of, one of those directions. It should be right about here. It was absurd. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can link to that video because it was, it was kind of funny to me. Someone asked, I had a couple people ask me to do a samurai review and I'm interested, but I, I don't necessarily wanna put my money towards that. If you had a Seiko Samurai of the best quality and you want me to talk about it on the show, just reach out to me and maybe we can work something out. Otherwise, I don't foresee myself picking up a Samurai. But yes, quality control. It's, it's one of the, it's a pet peeve and it's kind of a major concern because you know what? I can forego some things like this watch here. Do you see that? Look at the 12 o'clock, look at the little sword and shield and then look at the chapter ring and the bezel. Guess what? This, this is a J version of this watch, and still, the chapter ring was misaligned. I don't know. It's a little frustrating. It's not the end of the world. I'm still gonna make out what time it is, but come on. Come on, Seiko. Is this completely unacceptable? Uh, uh, I don't know. It doesn't bother me a whole lot, but I know for some of you, it is a deal breaker. I know some people that have sworn off Seiko for that reason. I strictly buy Seiko, so I have to forgive some of these things. But guys, like, people act as if the K versions are constructed by monkeys in Malaysia. If that's the case, then it's probably the same thing that's happening over in Japan, because you know what? This is no better than any other K model I've had, or J for that matter. Quality control issues. Yeah, if you're buying a watch and it was over $300, and you expect a certain degree of quality. This Vostok, I expected, I expected nothing. And it's, it's actually a better constructed overall, roughly. I'm gonna talk about this watch a little bit in the future, but it, it doesn't have as many issues as like your common Seiko. And that's absurd because I got this for like $60. The next major pet peeve I wanna talk about, and I've hinted at this multiple times in other videos. Uh, this is a personal one, strap length, guys. Strap length. You see this strap? See this strap? It's a good length. This length makes sense. It's a NATO. It's supposed to go through the, the little buckle here and through those keepers and fold around and neatly fit on your wrist with extra, you know, extra fabric for days to spare. That's how a strap should fit. The NATOs I commonly see have this little, little tab of fabric at the end that you could just barely scoop back under the keeper and then there's just another keeper that's just float, that's just loving life all by itself with just the no strap in it. Guys, strap length. Come on, this is, this is something that needs to be improved on every level with every company. Make longer straps. Follow Phenomenado's example. I want the option for longer straps, always. If I'm gonna buy a NATO or a Zulu, it better be really freaking long. Cause I would rather have the problem of it being too long and me just snipping a little bit of that extra fabric, which would never happen then have it too short because you know what? I'm paying full price for something that just kind of fits me. It's obnoxious. If, if This can't just be me. Tell me this is a pet peeve for you, please. Or, or I'm gonna sound insane right now, but it just bugs the heck out of me. Again, I had to step away from where I was sitting to illustrate this, but this, this is what your NATO should look like, guys. If your NATO doesn't look like this, if the NATO you've been wearing this whole time doesn't look like this, uh, it's the wrong size. It's not a well-made NATO. That's honestly this this is how I signify whether a NATO is made correctly is if they give it enough length for it to actually do what a NATO is supposed to do when you're tying the knot here. It's supposed to go all the way through these keepers and fit neatly on the other side. 
Uh, the, you know, and when you have a fixed keeper that's all the way out here for some reason, and your NATO looks like this, that's that doesn't that doesn't work either. But oh gosh, I got strapped for days. I got strapped for days here. And oh, the keeper floats. Gosh, I could wear it like this and still have extra length. That that is how every NATO should look. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with that pet peeve. This is a huge one for me, though. It's fix this. F fix this brands. If you're watching this video now, fix this. This is this segment should be this this commentary we're having. This is really what I'm just going to send to groups that send me things. Because I I as a whole, I love what's happening in the accessory market. You guys know I do a lot of accessory reviews, but across the board, NATOs are just done incorrectly in my book. So let's just make those changes and, and make the world a better place. Now the last pet peeve I'm going to mention, and it's a major deterrent I'm told from a lot of people that see I collect vintage watches, and it's actually kind of a complaint um, I have as well, but when you buy a vintage watch, let's just say something that's 30 plus years old, and it has loom. When your watch has loom on the dial and the handset, I uh... I am so reluctant to wear it in any activity that is going to jar it by any degree. And by the way, I, I, I frequent the gym here, I go jogging, I go biking, I bike to work. Sometimes I'll bike on occasion 45 minutes one direction and 45 back. So that's like an hour and 30 minutes of just jarring activity. And when I'm wearing something like my Seiko Belmatic here, I am so nervous that the loom is just gonna fly off the dial or fly off the handset. It just freaks me out every time. Now tell me this isn't a pet peeve for you guys with vintage watches. It is such a major concern of mine. Every time I wear one of my pieces that has loom that I just, I freak out. So I have a watch that's in, in for repair right now. Uh, when I get it back, of course, I'll do a video on it for you guys, but it is a vintage 6138-0011. So that is the Yachtsman or the UFO as some people have called it because the way it floats off the wrist that out of the way. Um, yeah, the, the UFO, it's great, um, but all of the dial configurations, most of them have loom. And that really worries me because it's a sports watch. The, I actually bought two copies of this watch because I finally found the variant that didn't have loom. There's a JDM, a Japanese domestic market only version of this watch, a five sports speed timer version of the UFO. I'll try to get a nice picture of mine up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about that doesn't have loom only because I want it to be future-proof. I don't want the loom to fall off because what can happen is if the loom falls off and you didn't notice and you know your watch has a date because every watch does, it could fly through the date window and go into the gears of your watch and really muck things up like that. That is an actual problem. So beyond just having your watch defaced by not having the loom on it, it's like an actual mechanical issue. Yeah, that is another major pet peeve of mine. and. I have to say, with vintage watches, like, I will disregard a listing if I notice that the loom is chipped or missing or just not there. You know, we all want a nice patina. We all want to see it finely placed on the dial and the handset. But if there's a little crack, you're immediately put off, or at least I am. And gang, if that is the same for you, share your thoughts in the comment section down below because I cannot believe that all of these pet peeves are solely mine. I know a few of you out there hate the quality control issues you see, hate the short NATO lengths, hate the short NATO lengths, and are thoroughly dissuade when you see a vintage watch that is either missing loom or has loom cracked on the dial. And, and again, it just, you buy it, you buy the perfect example, the perfect example. I'll, I'll get to a little close up so you guys can see this. The loom is perfect. And I am so, I'm not worried about the, the movement. I'm not worried about anything else. I'm just worried about the loom falling off. And it does that, it does that naturally. You can't, you can't stop it. But man, it really does make me reluctant to wear my vintage pieces while I'm doing anything physically active whatsoever. And I know some of you are gonna say, well, Pat, that's when you wear a G-Shock. I get it, I own a G-Shock, okay? But I don't always wanna wear a G-Shock when I go to work or when I work out because, it, it, uh, uh, these are so these are so fun. I'm not probably not gonna wear this working out unless I want to use that alarm for Something I like my options and I want to wear my options. Does that make sense? At any rate guys if you like this video if you liked being able to vent with me on some of these major frustrations these horrible pet peeves we have Feel free to hit that like button. It looks something like this and if you have any pet peeves you want to discuss on the show, leave those in the comment section down below. I'm going to do a few of these reoccurring. I think it's good 
every now and then that not only, you know, we share, you know, watch content and the stuff we love, but we talk about some of the things we dislike and just get that off our chest. Also enthusiasts, if you have friends, forums, or groups that enjoy watches as much as we do, or you want to encourage them to get into watches uh, as heavily as we are, feel free to share this video with them. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, another major pet peeve. Now, it's, it doesn't matter, you don't need to subscribe, but if you like this community and you wanna help it grow, then that is a small way to help it do so. Also, there is a notifier button next to the subscribe button. I think you can actually just hit that if you'd prefer just to see the videos and not be a member of this wonderful family. Uh, yeah, the notifier is gonna alert you as to when my video is released, and I do two to three of these videos a week, so if you wanna see more watch content, join us here. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette, and thank you for the time. Oh man, I turned the camera off and I turned it back on because I totally forgot I said I'd show you this. But uh, yeah, this is my Seiko Bellmatic and it's gorgeous. And of course it's gonna get a thorough review with a little history so you guys can learn a little bit more about this series of watch. But yeah, look how perfect the loom is on that. Let me just, can you see how pristine the loom is on this watch? I mean, you'd be nervous too, right? I'm not, it's not just me, I'm not crazy here. You would be nervous about that stuff falling off. I don't want it to fall off. Anyways, you know, I have the manual for this and they're talking about, you know, use underwater. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. People really tested the 70 meters water resistant on this guy back then. Um, yeah, that doesn't happen either.